Hey, it's Ted here. I'm in the uh, drive lab, and I wanted to go over some of the differences between the um, Alpha 1 Gen 2 drives, the older versions from 91, and the newer versions, which are around, I think, 2011. Um, and just those differences are really in the upper and some newer gear ratios and the lower. That changes the dynamics of the special tools that you need and how to put them together. So let's get going. Okay, so this is a um, earlier Alpha 1 Gen 2, and you can tell by the sticker on the side, it has some red uh, graphics on the top of the Menmer Cruiser and then gray underneath. The later model ones actually have an all gray kind of appearance to the sticker, but you can definitely tell the difference too by the way that the upper gear case is put back together. So in the earlier versions, we have the bearing assembly here that goes into the housing and it has two back-to-back -back bearings. So early Alpha 1s um, from the 80s into the early 90s, about 91, before Gen 2 I think was launched in 91, had virtually the same uh, set of bearings. Uh, the gears and the shafts are slightly different, but it really looks the same as an MR or an Alpha 1. So this assembly goes into the housing and then there are special tools to measure that. So the two measurements that we're gonna do on this after we assemble this and set rolling torque are the dimension of this gear to a special tool in the case. And I'll show you that tool. The other dimension we're gonna measure is the driven gear position and that's actually the position of the gear in the case. So we're gonna look at where is this gear in the case, and then where is the other gear in the case. So, the two tools for measuring that is the old design system that uses this input drive gear assembly, uses an older tool to measure the um, vertical shaft, which has a part number in the book of 91-60526. There are letter designations of X, Y and Z I'll show you so you can see that's X Y and Z and that has to do with the gear ratio so depending on what the gear is it depends on how I'm gonna put this in the case so what I want to do is for this particular application I'm gonna look at the gear ratio and figure out that I need to put that uh, into for a 198 letter Y so I'm gonna put this in the case carefully and I'm going to measure with a feeler gauge to the height of that. The target's 25,000, so you have to reshim, and I'll show that later in another video, but I just wanted to show you the difference. So here is the new drive with the different graphics, so you can see that. Now this is a different assembly. The top cover slightly different, um, but really this assembly is very different. It uses a different set of bearings and it actually has a spacer um, on here, an aluminum spacer between the two bearings and one bearing fits inside. Uh, this is a more robust case for the fact that this portion of the uh, assembly that fits into the case is surrounded by more metal, so I'll show you the thickness of that. So here is the new gear assembly as you can see it's a stepped arrangement here and you can see inside the case that there's a very noticeable thickness change in the case that supports that bearing on the new design so this is the new design i think from around 2011. if we look at the older design from 1991 up to somewhere around 20, 2011 something like that you can see that this is just a constant uh, size it doesn't have a step on it and you can see therefore then the thickness of the housing in here is much different so you can see that's consistently through so it's not as strong as the newer drives are these are plenty strong enough but the newer drives are definitely have a more robust um, support for that input shaft and that input drive gear okay so here's side by side the two upper input shaft so you have your yoke shaft and your input yoke this is pretty much the same um, I have not measured the carrier threads to see if they're the same or if it's a different part number my assumption is this is same this is very similar 
probably this component is as well as this one. Um, but then you get into these bearings and the diameter change in the housing. And that's where we get into, we need two different tools. So I have the new special tool and I have the old special tool. So the big difference between the tools, not just the part number is the letters X, Y, and Z versus the letters A, B, and C. So two totally different part numbers and you can see that those tools are shaped very differently too because you have that recess that goes in the case here. So being that this is the newer tool, we'll just see if that actually fits inside the housing to show you the difference. This is the older case, takes X, Y, and Z, and again, whatever letter for your gear ratio this lines up with, we're gonna slide this in the case all the way into the case. It's a pretty tight fit, so you wanna be careful when you put it in there, a little bit of lubricant. And let's just see how the, so let's see how the, the new tool fits, and it basically falls in there. Now, this dimension isn't gonna be the same, so, you can't use this tool for the older drive. You have to have the older tool. So unfortunately, you need two separate tools. Now, interesting enough, the dimension of this gear isn't these, these tools. It's a separate tool. And even though we have different gear ratios, you can see the size of the gears are very different here. We're gonna have different gear ratios. I use the same tool to measure this gear. So the old, drive assembly, the gear position here is measured in the same manner as the newer drive with the same tool. So this tool, part number 9160523, again has letters X, Y, and Z. So you look in the book to figure out what your gear ratio is off the drive, and then you put that on to measure the distance to the gear. And you're going to actually measure the gears, and then you're going to shim the gears to the case tell students and I'll tell technicians if you're getting into this and you're new put the original shims back in the case new bearings new gears reassemble it take your measurements and it'll get you close um, to what the case had it won't be the same you'll definitely have to reshim it but it may be five eight thousands difference um, I would never tell somebody to just take the gears change the gears and the bearings and put the original shims back in and call it good because it will not be. So you absolutely have to do the calculations here um, to, to figure out how that drive is put back together properly. So the importance of shimming drives um, becomes quite apparent when you actually see the results of improper shimming procedures and somebody that doesn't know what they're doing. And this is a perfect example of a set of gears that I took out of a gear case and um, had an issue. So this is the input gear and this is the driven gear, so drive driven gear so you can see the catastrophic problems when that happens. Um, one of the other notes is if you do have gear lube that's leaking into the bellows and into the boat, that's coming from the carrier seal. That is coming off of this yoke shaft. So what happens is there's a large seal that rides on this and it cuts a groove in that yoke shaft and then the gear lube level starts to go down because the gear lube leaks into the bellows and into the boat. If you have a drive lube monitoring system, it may on a newer boat actually have a float level and an alarm and the alarm will go off. And if that alarm goes off, the engine's either overheating, it's lost oil pressure, or the drive lube monitor floats down. So um, for boat owners, if that alarm does go off, pull the engine back to neutral, shut it off, look at your gauges first, see if you get oil pressure if it's overheating, open the engine cover and look at that drive loop monitor bottle and if the level's gone way down, you may have either lost prop shaft seals, but you might have lost this too. So then look in the bilge to see if you have any gear lube, green oil, mercury high performance gear lube in there and that might be indicative that this seal fails. Um, that seal does cut a groove in over a period of time it's a, uh, um, a very common fault that happens after many hundreds of hours of use. So resealing alpha drives, I would say, um, should be done every six to 800 hours at the most. Um, 500 hours is probably a good number to go by. Um, I find that around 600, somewhere around there, that these seals start to have issues. It's a lot cheaper to reseal the drive than it is to rebuild it when you need new gears. 
So I hope this video helps you understand that yes, you do need special tools. These are just a couple of special tools for measuring, but you still need the uh, removal and the installation tools for a Mercruiser drive to properly rebuild one of these drives. Um, there are lots of Alpha drives out there. Uh, it's a really easy drive to work on. It takes a little bit of knowledge on how to actually shim it, and that's what I'm teaching in this drives class right now with my students. We have this apart. I'm going to go into the lower units in the following weeks, and we'll get into the DPS drives later. So I hope this video shows you the difference between the older Alpha Gen 2s and the newer Alpha Gen 2s and some of the specifics on the tooling and the special tools that you need in order to properly shim these drives. I'll see you in the next video on the lower unit.